cultural narratives and how can we embrace your school cultural narrative and use it in a really powerful I guess powerful way for your akunga. So the first session, which I'm not sure if you're caught up on the first session, um, but we spent some time really unpacking what Mātaranga Māori is and what it can look like and the key documents of Te Tākanga o Te Wā, Aotearoa New Zealand History's Curriculum and Tātai Aho, Aho, Aho as three key documents that pave a really um, nice, simple, fluid journey of how to include Mataranga Māori. There is a recording of it, so if you go on to Grow Waitaha, there is a link there for that if you want to watch the first part. So this is kind of part two, now applying it to your context. So that was kind of the broader context. This is what's available to us in kura, and then moving into what your cultural narrative is in your own kura and how you can bring that to life to more naturally include mātaranga aspects for the new Digi Awards um, kaupapa slash um, overarching theme of wanting to feed that through and in, into entries in 2023. So um, there's this really lovely but old writing up around what a cultural narrative is, and I'll share these slides with you um, afterwards as well. But really, it's about understanding what the, a cultural narrative is. And it's remembering that although everyone has a cultural narrative or could have a cultural narrative, it is really unique about the place and the people that your kura, you know, sits within or is a part of or is an element of. So, you know, in Aotearoa, it recognises the histories of the area mana whenua, you know, tribes who have been and um, either settled or passed through and moved further south or north, as the case may be, and also uh, identify some of those special places where, you know, they have become sacred, whether the urupa, you know, um, cemetery, sorry, or whether they have or pieces of history or actions have taken place and have remained with the land because of the connection to the land. So for schools in Aotearoa, you know, the opportunity to embrace your cultural narrative that mana whenua um, has given as a, a token or a gesture is probably a better word of commitment to that partnership. Um, it just shows you that how you can recognize mana whenua and value their knowledge of sharing but also ways of being in te ao maori please feel free to interrupt me at any time if i say something you want to ask a question all good so if we know what it is then i guess that key thing is really unpacking and understanding what your cultural narrative is saying because you will have that special unique uh, historical relationship um, it will tell you more about the place that your kura sits and the people who have been before you know te puna etc and it just builds that common understanding of the traditional slash spiritual connections and maybe heritage elements as well so um there could be key points as i mentioned on the last one of things that have happened it could be just about settlement in your area it could be more than people it could be about the water or flora or fauna like there's so many elements dependent on the local you know place and space of where you are that can um be incorporated or could be incorporated, you know, and we've got some kura in Ōtutahi who between five of them share a similar um, cultural narrative because they're located, located quite close together, but when, then with each of those, they've got something quite specific and special to their own individual kura. So, the, you know, cultural narratives can look like a whole lot of different things um, depending on where yours is sitting. So, um, it's really important to understand those different elements potentially of a cultural narrative because these give you different parts that you can pull out or you know get your tamariki to unpack with you a little bit more so you know because we're in New Zealand there is usually an iwi a hapu or sub tribe connection um, within those iwi groupings um, there will be like pūrāko and stories or experiences that are 
They may have similar themes from one school to the next, but they'll be different because of the people involved or the, the whatever it was, the event that happened. So just knowing that there is a uniqueness, I think is really special. And then it's that uniqueness that brings the Mataranga Māori alive for your kura and for your tamariki and their uh, Digi Award uh, entries, uh, stories, experiences that they're trying to sell. Um, so it's not uh, one story that's the same and they can't really be du du duplicated or copied or used in a slightly different way. Okay. So it usually contains, you know, a cultural narrative will usually contain um, things that your school will likely know a little bit about because of where your area is and you will already have that but some basic understanding of that to be able to take on and use and embrace those ideas with tamariki but that could be around whakapapa it could be around um waiata whakatauki things that have been written in the past it might be some symbols or some key features you know if you think of a tokoka tree a cabbage tree you know i'm thinking of burnside high they have that key connection with that tokoka tree and that group that sits on the corner of this section because that's a significant um point of history in Taonga. Um, so there's lots of different elements, you know, talking what I've already said about flora, fauna, um, geographical uh, sites that have had significant events happen at them. So there's lots of different parts. So it's really just working out for your, yourself or your kura or your cultural narrative what are these key elements that you're not ever probably going to unpack the whole thing you represent your whole cultural narrative within a digi award entry but be able to take a an element of it or a pathway of it and give that um action of it could be retelling it could be recreating it could be um, taking an artifact of some description, you know, if you've got some special taonga in your school and bringing it to life and having the kids ask a series of questions to truly understand, you know, potentially what it was like in the past and what it could look like here and now and into the future. So lots of different ways and lots of really cool resources to um, help as well. So I guess the big question for today is the how. You know, you've got your cultural narrative. It's a comprehensive, probably, document with lots of knowledge in it. And, you know, as I guess as Kura, we have that, um, that need or the desire to acknowledge and engage with it because it has been gifted to us from mana whenua. And it brings such a richness to school at schools as they, I guess, try and strengthen their understanding and that relationship with mana whenua. Um, so it's about, I mean, we know that these provide sort of a big picture for schools as a um, as a co-papa, as a narrative as to where or how this came to be. But I think what is cool for Digi Awards, it gives you guys as Kayako an opportunity to show your commitment to the ongoing development of that cultural narrative and that you can do it in a really culturally responsive way and in a way where it's giving mana to your cultural narrative and you know that's what's special about being a school in Otodahi you know since the earthquakes is that we have this slightly different positioning than what we had 20 years ago so it's a really cool thing to be part of um, it's a really cool way cultural narratives just to unlock kids potential because you know um, the uh, whakatauki sorry lost the word the whakatauki for this year's um, digi awards is called pohira ko ohanga ara ki aoho i think it is um, and then that's just about you know allowing kids to have their creativity giving them the opportunities to create and craft their own stories so giving them that strong foundation of cultural narrative which is probably not new at all in your schools you all have taught elements or parts of or have um I mean, I know it's at all, but there's lots of taonga, there's lots of representations of the cultural narrative. So 
I guess the thing is to pull on it and then give the kids that uh, license to be inspired and to consider and curate new things and possibilities from something that's already there for the, um, I guess, taking and there for the understanding. Um, so, yeah, it's that thinking about what to, could the kids take out of it and how can you engage them in the learning and then they can reflect that through their Digi Award um, entry. Um, yeah, I think it's that nice connection for Tamariki to understand something from the past, what it is now, and what it could look like in the in the future for them, from their perspective. Um, you can look at elements of uh, whakapapa, you know, creating a sense of continuity and self-responsibility, you know, because kids feel really proud of who they are. You know, they feel really... Um, empowered also when they understand and can get up and talk about you know elements of tikang or elements of te ao maori so you know there's that strong heritage element and then there's that strong um kaupapa within your cultural narrative and you know that's there to promote the greatness of your kura um is there to be innovative and to cause or grow resilience and uh, strength, I guess, at the same time in stories from our tūpuna, the stories or the uh, bits of information that exist in your cultural narrative. Okay. Any questions about any of that? Any thoughts? No, oh. I don't have any. <clears throat> All good. Well, good. So with the permission of Andrea, uh, the principal at St Albans School, she has given me permission to talk about the um, St Albans culture narrative. Okay, so Sam, you'll know all about this. So sorry, give me 10 minutes and then I'll stop talking. But, you know, this is uh, the visual at the moment. Sam, has this been coming out of the new design yet? And I haven't got it? Or are we still working with this design? Sorry, Carmen. Heather's just outside with the um, leaf blower. Ah. <laughs> I'm just trying to... yeah, I know you missed that sound a lot. Um, <laughs> I just missed what your question was. Sorry. Uh, oh, is there a new version of the visual um, localised uh, curriculum in the no. no, not yet. Not, not, I think it's, it's been coming for a long time. Anyway, so this, time. this cultural narrative for St Albans is all around. Um, a desire to strengthen the school community and to so that they understand and can connect with um, Māori history, places of importance in St Albans, the natural environment, and it recognises Ngāi Tōhūrere as Ngāi Tahu Whānui as Mana Whenua of the Takiwā. Um, there's also that whole part where, you know, all kōra, uh, or most kōra on this side of Christchurch, you know, Ngāi Tōhūrere, is um, the local mana whenua, the, you know, there's the whole um, Tuahiwa Marae and settlement and the rural community and knowing that their sacred mountain and river from um, Mokateri and uh, Rakahuri, I think it is, the Ashley River, you know, it has been developed and given as that blessing from um, Ngai Tuahuriri. And we know that in St Albans, European settlement, um, it was primarily wetlands and streams. And that early environment made the floor and fauna and trees and plants and shrubs, etc. And then the, you know, fish and insects and reptiles and birds and water birds all really, um, they were thrive, thriving and they had this beautiful environment where they were nourished. And with the waterways, there was lots of them, as we've said, because of all the tributaries and wetlands and streams, etc., which is evident in this picture and how, you know, even Otakuru is the main river um, flowing out to Ihutai, so the estuary. So there's kind of those physical elements. Then we also know that in, our, in the St Albans cultural narrative, you know, the earliest iwi that were in Canterbury were Waitaha. 
and that's going back sort of 750, 800-odd years. And it tells us that the Rangatira Rākai Hautu, who, were, who first landed in Whakatua Nelson with his iwi, um, and he was on the Waka Uruau, um, they, he was the, uh, the Rangatira who created the lakes of Te Waipaunamu because he had his digging core, his stick, and he etched out the the lakes and the rivers of uh, Te Waipaunamu as he moved from Nelson down south. Um, and that's where the original name of Banks Peninsula came from because it's Te Pātaka or Rākau Hautu. So Pātaka is a storehouse, so it was Rākau Hautu storehouse. And um, Lake Ellesmere was considered to be Rākau Hautu's fish basket, so Te Kete Ika or Rākau Hautu. So the area is very important to, um, to Waitaha due to um, the abundant wildlife and food resources that existed here. Um, moving out towards the Canterbury Plains, we know that, you know, there was the Waitaha settlement at Puari, um, and that was sort of between, I think, Victoria Square and Beely Ave, so that top side. Um, and there's also the Urupa that's still there at the, or remembered there at the intersection of Cambridge Terrace and Oxford Terrace. So there's all these um, key sites within Ōtautahi that are uh, reflected in the St Albans cultural narrative. And then I know further that within this narrative, the birds are the tamariki and the whare are the waterways that sustain life. So all the buildings, the class, or not even classrooms, but the buildings, the group of classrooms in a building, you know, they are given a waterways name. And because water sustains life and the classrooms are sustaining their educational learning experiences of life, um, they have included with their visual here, um, some of their mahi with Wiramu Grey around Aginui being old Aki Matatu, which pays homage to Kaitahu. Um, there's Papa Tuanuku and making sure their values are held really tight and true in the roots of the oak tree. Um, George, there's an oak tree that stands literally in the middle of the whole school um, location. So it's a key part of the landscape at St Albans School. And, you know, the whole basis of the vision is grow, nurture, thrive. So um, there's so many elements in here that could be pulled out to uh, unpack more with your Digi Award entry. So, I mean, you'll have ideas if you've, as you've heard me talking, but, you know, from unpacking maybe about one of the birds, all of the birds, looking at that um, movement of water and the differences between, you know, hikuwai to otakoro to ihutai. Um, there's the flora and fauna elements and what they they were and maybe investigating what still is around or living or growing or existing today in the area. Or it could be that changes over place, uh, place and space and time. Um, Obviously, key things like value sometimes, um, the stories, the pūrāko, because there's stories around each of those bird, each, birds, each of the manu. There's stories around Rākau Hautu as a key rangatira in, uh, um, in the narrative. There's that opportunity to look more at landmarks or um, spaces like Lake Ellesmere that's been mentioned around the, the plains of Canterbury to the Pātaka of Rākai Hautu. Um, the opportunities are endless and like, that's really the key part of today is to help unpack so it's not just um, one or two ideas that there's multiple opportunities and of course you'll have your own term kaupapa or theme or you know your mahi that you're working towards that you might want to link it into that but there's also that opportunity to you know it could be a whakatauki you know it could be unpacking a term me whakatauki a school whakatauki or a waiata or a motiatea there's just I guess the options are endless and that's why we're here today is to just 
spark a point of creativity for you. Any pātai or questions or wonderings, thoughts? I think there is like, it's the opportunity is almost endless. The amount of things you listed has broadened what I thought I could for the, do for this entry. So yeah, no, that was fantastic. All web-based, um, but just wanted to draw your attention to them as maybe sources of research and points that you could uh, include or give links to your tamariki. So there's Kahuru Manu. Um, so this is a really cool website around um, place names and mapping and it was designed as a cultural mapping project and just finding those traditional place names associated with uh, stories within Ngai Tahu as a rohi. So, you know, you may find some interesting information depending on what you want to do around local place names and with this cultural mapping project that took place. So it could be really useful, might not be depending on what your pūrāko or your story is or whatever it is that you're going to do with your tamariki. Um, the next one is the Māori history in the New Zealand cur curriculum. So this is twofold. There's the, this is the English version of Te Tākanga o Te Wā. So Te Tākanga o Te Wā sits within the Te Marautanga o Aotearoa and is the sister document to Aotearoa New Zealand history's curriculum sitting under the new Te Mātai Aho refresh. But it does come in English. And what's really cool about um, the Māori history in the New Zealand curriculum, or Te Tākanga or Te Wā, the same document, different uh, Māori name, English name, is that when you go into this website, they have a kaupapa like Treaty of Waitangi, and then it breaks it down into video resources, uh, book resource, reading resources, but it also breaks it down into years. So there's sort of year one to three, four to six, seven, eight, et cetera. Um, and it just gives you a whole lot of ideas and things that you can either create from or just add to your knowledge bank in order to create something else. Right? Um, the next resource is the Aotearoa New Zealand Histories curriculum and on the teaching resources pages, pages there is a few you know once again progressionally set up with your ones to threes fours to sixes um i think there's some all level documents there for all years oh yeah there is um so just you know there's lots of examples in there as well and lots of ways of presenting um learning although did you awards we know has a real tech base but there's still that opportunity you know to do it in a variety of ways and depending on where your kids skill sets are and probably your own skill sets as well which are way better than mine um tuia mataranga uh, you may have heard of this one before but this one's really good around voyaging and first encounters um, so if you're sort of looking at that sort of migration or potentially, you know, depending on the pūrāko that are evident in your uh, cultural narratives, you know, there's that whole legacy of learning in this document around Toya Mataranga and it's and just to include some more perspectives. Um, and knowing that some are less known or less popular that's not a really good phrase but you know it's just giving another perspective that may add something to, to your kids learning and so when they share they not share their knowledge they are able to portray those different perspectives or similar perspectives depending on what it is and then we have the national library resources so the National Library resources are actually really amazing for all of your teaching and learning, and I never knew this existed. So um, if you have time, there's some really amazing resources and things that are set up and templates. And one of them I'm talking about, which it depends how you're delivering your Digi Awards, but there's a really cool resource around being critical about um, online information that you get and it takes the kids through a whole process of making that judgment about how factual or how correct this information is about where it's sourced from and what it means and how much you know should we pay attention to it so yeah lots of really cool resources around 
teaching ideas, but also a key kaupapa, as you can see down the side, and that's around arrival and settlement of Māori. You know, you can go in and find things around Ōtotahi in Canterbury, which may be of help. Any partai about any of those resources? Kauri. Okay, so then the last plug is, is that uh, the opportunity arose through the Ōtotahi Learning Day. So that is an initiative run by, I believe, the City Council and the libraries. So Tūranga, um, what they do is they offer a number of tamariki focus based sessions. Um, so I was sort of asked, could I include this in some way? So the way that we've included it, which um, is up to schools, you don't have to do it, you can do it, is that we're offering support for Tomodeki. So what that looks like is you go on to the Ōtotahi Learning Days. I think I've popped that in a uh, link in a previous email, but I will send out another one after today's session. Um, and you can register in the way Gemma and I envisage this working is it's the 10th of May Wednesday afternoon 1 30 to 3 booking in like a 15 minute session and we will provide a tech expert or a mataranga you know someone who has a little bit of knowledge around um history of Māori here in Ōtotahi and just have a little bit of a cordial with them to just give them a little bit of ideas maybe or they might just want to pass that idea past another set of eyes an external ear and get a little bit of feedback so um yeah sort of thinking 15 minute blocks so that they don't have to share the time with someone else they can come in and then someone is just totally focused on them and their idea and what it is they want to achieve so for some kura i know or i learned on tuesday that this is too soon they're not quite at this stage yet um, but for your kura not sure where you're at at the process it might work in just nicely and it's there as an opportunity if you would like to take it up if not could you buy that as well Point. but yeah that's for the 10th of may which isn't that far away really Cup point right that kind of brings us to the end have you got any questions otherwise i'll move on to cut a care and let you get on with your mornings no questions but thank you yeah thanks carmen um we're going to the impact ed um minecraft thing that's on the morning of the same morning but it finishes at 12 30 and your thing doesn't start till 1 30 yeah are we able to just like hang out at the library sort of thing with kids if we're already there with them or would we have to leave and come back no like, but this one is delivered on zoom because what we're going to do oh. is we're going to put them in a breakout room with a facilitator so it might mean we have you know four groups in at 1 30 but i'll have four breakout rooms with a with a support person in each of those rooms does that make sense right yeah yeah so it's zoom based um so it's really uh quiet space headphones um the opportunity just to be able to hear and connect with uh, in a breakout room with a support person an expert a tech expert a mataranga maori i won't say expert because no one's an expert in mataranga maori <laughs> sounds really good Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Kia ora. Well, now I'm a Korua, and I'm a Hiki or Taima, Mete Fakaro, Mete Korero, Tenera. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for your time. Thank you for sharing your ideas and having a Korero, a chat around cultural narratives today. It's been a pleasure to be here with you and um, support you and your thinking and your planning and your ideas for Digi Awards 2023. It's really cool to be able to support the kaupapa with um, Helen McGugan, who is Digi Awards person at CORE. Um, so yeah, thank you both. Um, it's been a pleasure. So we'll just close the karakia and then hopefully you can go and catch your breath and have a cup of coffee before the tamariki arrive. He karakia whakamutunga, unuhia te pō, te pō whiri marama, tomokia te ao, Te ao whatu tangata, tātai ki runga, tātai ki raro, tātai ahorau, haumi e, hui e, tāi ki e. Nā mahi kōrua, thank you, have a great day, hope your Thursday is amazing. <laughs>